In today's video, I'm going to talk about my custom branding and logo design process. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another episode of Wine and Design where we talk about graphic design and sip on some wine. Today I have an organic Chardonnay that I actually got a new one. So I left it downstairs but it's really not super exciting. It's just a store brand organic Chardonnay. Hope that you guys are doing wonderful and I'm super excited to talk to you guys today about my custom branding and logo design process. So I remember a long time ago, I created a video all about my custom logo design process. And although it's still very accurate to how I design my logo still, I wanted to do an updated and refreshed one and go into detail about how I design logos because sometimes it's like, where do you begin? So I'm actually gonna be showing you guys a real client of mine. And I'm super excited about this client because it's totally right up my alley with the types of clients I want to work with moving forward. It's going to be a client that focuses a lot on women's health, which is also very fitting for this time in our world right now. So I'm very excited to be showing you guys this client and we're gonna be actually starting from the ground up. So I'm gonna show you guys just the first step of the process for this and my initial concepts of her logo. Let's take a sip and hop right into it. The very first thing that I have my clients do when it's their very first week of their branding is I like for them to fill out my questionnaire. This questionnaire is going to go over all of the things I need to know as a designer, such as who they really are, their goals. Their goals can also change by the time they talk to you and by the time you start the project. So that's why I actually like to have them fill the questionnaire out kind of right when we're starting the project. So I like to know who they are, their goals and their competitors and some of the websites and brands they like the look of, if they can include links, that's even better. Um, and I also like them to kind of go into detail with what they don't like about those specific competitors, websites or brands, because that kind of gives me an idea of where they want to set themselves apart. So I go into detail with all of these questions and my first step once I receive that back from them is to read it thoroughly. I have noticed that if I just skim over it, there's actually little hidden gems in there that are really going to help me when it comes to the design process and creating the mood board. So this client of mine went into so much detail and I was so, so grateful for that. She told me all about her competitors, where she really wants to kind of like niche down in and that was just so, so helpful. She also has a logo already. Her logo that she currently has has too many colors in it and she really just told me she wants colors that she can use all the time and that don't clash with each other and that are just very neutral and simple, which as we all know is totally my jam. The second step of the process for me is to draw out all of my ideas. The reason I like to do this before I go looking for inspiration is because I do not want my own creativity and my own ideas to get clouded by everything that I'm about to consume. So I like to just take a simple notebook like this and draw out all of my initial ideas. So I'll show you guys what I started. Um, just really simple drawings. They don't have to be perfect, but this just really helps get my creative juices flowing and also I can reflect back on this once I have the mood board created and I can really just create some awesome concepts from that. So like I said, doesn't have to be perfect. Just grab a notebook and a pen and draw out all of your ideas. Now my third step is to create the mood board. With my branding packages, I always include a mood board because this not only sets the stage for the entire branding, but it also just helps the client understand how their brand should really look as a whole. So I really like to follow a few rules with this. I like to include some interior design inspiration. I like to include some fashion. I like to include textures and all the colors I want to implement into the brand onto this mood board. That way when they look at it, they can really just embody how the brand is going to look and feel. I do have a template where I just drag and drop all the images I'm gonna be using for specific clients. 
That way it's a very easy process for me. What I used to do was create different layouts of the mood board and it just got a little bit hectic because I would overthink it and um, it just took a little more time than it really needed to. So I have the same layout. I just change out the images and I make it fit that client's branding perfectly. In order to get my inspiration, I also like to go to my client's Instagram or any of their social media that currently exists to really embody the way my client speaks and their messaging. I just get to know the brand really well in terms of like what they already are doing. It's getting really dark out. I'm going to go turn on this light and I'll be right back. I'm back and I felt like I was like a floating head since it was so dark back here, but I feel like this looks a lot better. Moving on to my fourth step of the process is to create the brand values in the overall company bio so this is something new I really started doing but it really really helps especially if I'm doing branding and web for my client this is when my questionnaire comes in so handy I'm constantly looking back at the questionnaire to see how they responded and how the client's voice actually sounds through their writing because I really want to make sure I embody that with their company bio and that I'm pulling some of those keywords that they included in their descriptions into the values. So I like to do this process just really off the cusp. I like to look at my mood board and really just think of those feelings I get when looking at the images and look at the questions they answered and just come up with some really powerful values that this brand can live by. So just to give an example for this client that I'm using, I came up with the values such as feminine power and holistic wellness and really doesn't have to be one single word at least for me i like to just show what this brand is really going to make their mission and their value and what people can expect to really receive from this brand when they're working with them but like i said this is just when i really have to feel and just act as the brand to create the values when it comes to the company bio i have a few tricks for this I was really considering not sharing all my tips because they are their little gems in here. One of the things I like to use for the company bio is this tool called jasper.ai. It's a really awesome tool, but basically what I do is I create a really short summary of the brand and what they have told me so far and I create the bio just off of what I believe it is and then I plug it into Jasper and it just creates a beautiful piece of content. So what it does is it just adds in better description, better descriptive words, it adds in just a very good flowing sentence and it just makes it sound more powerful than I could because I'm not a copywriter. So it is a tool that is sort of just an AI tool. So if you really have a copywriter on your team, I would utilize them for this part. But for me, this has really been working and I like to utilize something that is efficient and quick and it really has been proving to show me a lot of value as well. So I have you've been using this trick and I have been including this description next to the mood board so that the client can really read that and look at the board and make sure we're on the same path and we're on the same vision and that way I can move forward. I told myself not to lose count, but I did. So I don't know which step we're at now. After the mood board and after the values, I like to then hop into the color palette. So the color palette is something that I actually like to show within the mood board because having the color palette next to the mood board just really helps tie it all together. But when I come up with the color palette, I actually just take the eyedropper tool and I pull colors from the mood board. So this is something I don't think I've ever really shared because it's just something I've been noticing that I do a lot because the mood board really is embodying what I want the brand to look like. So why not pull some of those tones from the images? So that is my trick for doing that. But also sometimes I like to just read the questions they answered on my questionnaire uh, because a lot of times they might mention that they want to include some browns, some beiges, and I have my go-to beiges because beige is actually kind of a tricky color sometimes to really nail down because you can either go a little too pink with it or a little too brown with it. So finding that good happy medium of a good beige is, it's really tricky. So I have some beiges in my library and in my swatches that I actually like to use for clients and I don't mind using that 
um, kind of often for different clients because it's a solid beige and it doesn't always have to be the primary color for the brand. So that is how I like to do the color palette. I sometimes will include the hex codes for the color palette if I know that we're going to be using this one. But if I have multiple color palettes for, for them to choose from, I don't include any codes until we decide on the final one because it's extra work for me and I also don't know how they really feel about it yet. So I might as well wait and give them the codes once we decide. Before I dive into the concepts, I actually sent over the brand mood board and the color palette because I want to make sure I'm on the right path. So when it comes to editing the mood board, if they have any feedback on that, I typically send them those edits with the next, with the first round of concepts. So I'm not going to spend weeks and weeks on editing the mood board. I want to jump right into the concepts because now I have a really good idea where they're at with the feedback. So. That is something I now we're on to the logo part of the process. So now that we have drawn out all of our logos in our notebook in the very beginning, we have the mood board with, and while I was creating the mood board, I probably saved some inspiration of logo ideas within my Pinterest. So I have a really good starting point now to create the logos. So for the initial concepts, I honestly go crazy with it. I like to throw out all my ideas, whether it's crazy fonts or I want to manipulate typography, I do everything and anything because I want to give them as many concepts as I can so that we really know what they do and don't like. And I do not worry, like one of the biggest pieces of advice I could give any designer is to not overthink this part because if you start perfecting each concept that you're giving them, you're probably going to miss out on getting some really solid feedback from them on the very first step. So I don't worry about if I don't really love the logo, my client might love the logo. So I like to include all the ones that I created for them. I mean, there's some here and there where I'm like, it's not even worth sending over because I don't want my name tied to this one. But most of the time I like to include up to six even sometimes eight different concepts in the very beginning. I like to tell my clients around four, and then if I overperform and give them six to eight, then they're very happy, and it's just the more the merrier at this point of the process. So when I'm designing the logo though, I like to just go and search for my fonts first. That's the first thing I do is I go and look for all the different fonts I'm gonna use. And I like to actually create a folder on Creative Market and save all the fonts that I'm drawn to that I think are really gonna work for the brand. And I know you guys have seen my trick about image tracing the font if you're not ready to purchase it. That really helps me use the font and show the client what the font looks like before spending loads of money on it. But you can also find demo versions of the font most of the time if you just do a Google search. So definitely try that out as well. But I like to search for my fonts and then as I'm kind of going through the fonts, I'm in the back of my mind thinking about how I'm going to tie this all together, what I want the element of the logo to be. And then this is when I start drawing the element. So I actually have an iPad and I will figure out which iPad I have. I never know, but I'll put the name of the iPad down here, but I have an iPad and I have the app called Procreate, which is 100% worth it. I think it's $30, maybe even less, but it's the best app ever. I am able to do so much with it and I do have the Apple Pencil as well, right in here somewhere. Um, and I like to just sit down with my iPad and sometimes I freehand it, but sometimes I will go find an image on Google or just somewhere and trace parts of it and then add in different elements from other images to create a really cool submark. So for example, for this client, since she is a women's health um, advocate, I wanted to do something with ovaries because I was like, you know, that's just like, it'll be like a really cool hidden message to make it look really like modern and just really cool. So what I did was I went and found like a silly anatomy picture of a uterus and I basically just traced the outline of that. So this is where you really have to tap into your creativity and how you want to tie this all together. In order to vectorize the art, I like to airdrop it over to my computer and then image trace it in Illustrator to create a really 
clear, crisp, black and white logo. So that is how I create my elements. And then I tie it all together with the fonts and I add in the color palette that we chose. Like I said, I like to design up to six, sometimes eight concepts, and I like to include lots of variations of fonts and lots of variations of shapes, um, depending on, of course, what they really want to see based on their questionnaire. But that is how I like to put it all together and kind of my mental process of what goes first, whether it's the font, the element, the drawing whatever it is that is this is how i do it one really important thing that i have learned through time is to make sure that you're labeling each concept so they know how to refer to the ones they like you want to make sure that process is really easy for them because i definitely in the very beginning have had issues where they are referring to a logo that i we just had some miscommunication and i was editing the wrong logo and yeah you don't want to waste time you just want to make sure that everything is seamless and easy for both you and the client so once i send over these concepts i like to kind of give my clients a timeline to respond to them that way we can stay on track and that i know that the following week i can implement those edits while it's still fresh in my head so that is my branding and initial logo concept process i really hope that this was helpful um i definitely gave away some of my little secrets in there. So let me know if you guys liked them and if you enjoyed this video. Let's take a sip of wine for that one because that was a lot of talking. Anyway, I wanted to thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. I feel like these videos just light me up inside and I love talking about branding. Branding is honestly my favorite, my favorite thing to do and I am, currently accepting new clients for august and september so if you're interested in working with me definitely reach out i always have my information down below if you're interested in learning more about my branding process i do have a course on it that i always leave down below as well with that course you will receive my branding guideline template if you're interested in that that will be part of the course and i am thinking about updating the course a little bit because i do learn a lot through time and I always want to make sure to share what I learn because, you know, we're all learning. I'm not perfect, but I do want to give back and share with you guys some of the things and learning curves that I have gone through. So I really hope that this was helpful and any little tricks that you want to share as well. I'd love to hear it. And thank you guys so, so much for watching. And I would appreciate it so much if you enjoy my channel to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in my next video. I'm hoping what I said could make you change your mind.